all. Uh, great. Uh, so exciting to have you all. We are going to leave Africa today and we're going to head across the Mediterranean to Europe. So the theme of our November program is going to be Europe. But we cannot leave Europe until we mop up a little bit of old business. So I'm before I share my screen, I'm going to queue up a quick quiz on Senegal. So just one short moment here. Yeah. While Lou gets that set up, just make sure our TVs and our cell phones are silenced to the best of our ability so we are all able to hear. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alex. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. Okay, so here's some, I'm, I'm only going to do three trivia questions today, but I'm going to do them for three for Senegal and three for Croatia. So let's fire up Senegal. Your choices, as always, are a necklace and or a bracelet. By the way, has everybody received the bracelets and necklaces I sent so far? No, I haven't received mine yet, Lou. Oh, no. I sent I them. Oh, I, I sent them. I sent them. I sent them. So keep waiting. Okay. I'm yeah, I sent, I sent everybody so far. Uh, for those who received them, are, are you all liking them or should I send something else? No, don't send nothing else. My granddaughter want mine and I won't give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go with Senegal. Uh, so, uh, so what is the most famous type of tree in Senegal? The tree? Mm -hmm. Most well, famous well, kind of tree. Alex, if you could monitor the chat, that would be. I fantastic. am. I'm looking first person that gets it. I'll see. Yeah, it. first, first, first person to chat it gets it. Most it famous be. type of tree in Senegal. I said it last time. Yes, you did. Okay, I know. Babour. What is it? Babour. I think you got it. Now, who who said that there? That was Mr. Harold. Let's see. Ready? Here we go. Yep, the baobab tree. Oh, Congratulations. Damn. The baobab tree. Yeah, the baobab tree. They're very, very famous in Senegal. They grow everywhere. You can see mm -hmm. in the background there's some, in the foreground yeah. there's some. Mm. Okay, next question. So, uh, oh, by the way, necklace or bracelet? Mm -hmm. Oh, necklace is fine. Necklace? Okay, congratulations. Yes. Now, here's a tough one. What is the what is the main local language spoken in Senegal? French. Wolof. French. French. Right. French. Who said Wolof? Who said uh, Brenda, that? Brenda Thompson said it first. Brenda. Whoa, that was a hard one. Great job. Great I job, know. Brenda. Wolof. Yes. Oh. About, I think they say about 70% of the local tribe, the people from the local tribe is Wolof. And so the, the local, the language of the Wolof tribe is Wolof. Okay, great job. Oh, necklace or bracelet? Um, right. Bracelet. Thank you, thank you. Bracelet. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, next and last question for Senegal. This is another tough one. What <laughs> is the name of the form of wrestling that's so popular in Senegal? Mm. It's a tough one. Y'all remember from last time? <laughs> I only mentioned it briefly. Can't remember the name of it though. Mm. It's spelled N. Say it again. N, N J O M. No, that's not Jump. what I have. No. No, it's a good guess, but it's not what I have. Is it spelled L A M A? -M -A? Yes. Oh, okay. oh, good job, Miss Foster. Thank you. You got it. Right. How did you? How did you know that? Did you Google it, or how did you find it? I Google it. 
I don't know what <laughs> time is Foster. Miss Foster, Lamb is an absolute sensation in uh, in Senegal. It's it's you know it's it's almost like the NFL or you know Major League Baseball. A, a lot of people pull themselves out of poverty by you know becoming excellent in that or lift themselves up in all kinds of ways. It's a real it's a real way to riches. It's a remarkable sport. What they do wrestling dirt. Mm -hmm. it, well, it's such a rough sport, and they toss each other on the ground that they got to do it in sand. It's like a beach; they got to do it in sand, or they or they break their shoulders and legs. It's a very rough sport. I mean, we oh. showed pictures last week. It's full contact boxing with no gloves, mm. and it's and it's and it's all the kicks and moves from karate with no with no mat, and and I mean it's it's got everything. Oh wow! Uh, Good job, Miss Foster. You want a necklace or a bracelet? Um, bracelet. Thank you. Good job to Good you, job. Uh, Thank you, Brenda, and and uh, Mr. Harold. Good job. Dude looks strong, doesn't he? <laughs> Real strong. <laughs> yeah, the, the the gosh, the videos I was showing last, my gosh, did those guys look strong? Really strong. All right, let me see if I can share uh, my next my next uh, session here. Uh, just a moment. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Are, are you still seeing it or did it scroll off? No, we still see the lamb. Oh, you still see the lamb? Okay. Hello. Whoops. Not 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 your goat. No. <laughs> uh, 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 okay. Now, oh, now you see me. No, try okay. stopping your uh, screen share. And well, then another quick trivia question it has nothing to do with the presentation. Uh, it has to do with my slides being out of order. Uh, if you if you want if you want to try to lose some weight, what place should you avoid? Quick question. There's no bracelet or necklace on this. Fast place. food. Which one? Fast food. Fast food. Yeah, that's good. That's but that's not what I got. Here we go. I hop. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> I hop. <laughs> no one that's, ain't gained no weight. I ain't been in that hop. <laughs> that's me right there. This is my, my buddy I grew up with in high school. This is my next door neighbor, <laughs> Sherry. This is my good friend, Steve. And, you know, we got <laughs> we got to stay out of the I hop. That's what we got to do. <laughs> <laughs> my friend here manages, he's a manager of the I hop. So we oh, get. So we get free food when we go to the IHOP. So that's really bad. Uh oh, that's them freebies. Yeah, <laughs> he looks like a Kojak's uh, brother. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to continue on here. So here we go, Senegal. Or excuse me, Croatia. Here we go. So I'm going to try to start off with a little bit of history. It, this is a five minute presentation, but it gives you some background. Croatia is complicated. It's almost like the Middle East. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like one warring thing after another warring thing going on for a thousand years. And so, you know, it's important that you have that background. So here we go. I'm going to play it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mr. Mr. History. <clears throat> this is Europe, and here is Croatia. Now let's get a quick rundown, shall we? The archaeologists tell us Croatian clay has been inhabited since Paleolithic times, with various stone, copper, and Bronze Age cultures succeeding each other, and leaving only fragmentary whispers for us to ever so faintly discern from the silent caverns of long ago. From the 11th century BC, the belligerent Illyrians lorded over the land, notably the tribe called the Liburnians, who were based along the coast, where they raided others in pirate attacks for centuries, earning the scorn of the Greeks and the Romans, the historian Livy dubbing them savages. And like every other region with its toes in the Mediterranean, the Romans conquered it and called this area Dalmatia. And yes, the dog breed did originate from this spot, but much later. This here is the palace of Emperor Diocletian in Split, who himself was born in Dalmatia. Now, when the Western Roman Empire fell to bits, the Germanic Ostrogoths took over, who were followed by the Eurasian Avars, and then from the 7th century, the Slavs swept in and took over the Balkans. By the 800s, the Slavic speakers here were known by the Ethnonym Croats, and over time they adopted the Latin script and Roman 
and Catholic Christianity. Croatia became a kingdom in 925 with Domislav as first king. Who... So, so before I get too far, I wanted to stop right here because I want to show you where Croatia is. And so uh, I'm going to quickly toggle over to uh, my other screen here, and then we'll come right back here. So just a moment. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to toggle. Mm. Oh. Well, here, I, I'm, I'm having some toggle problems. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, this... This is uh, this is Italy right here. You know, this is Turkey. Here's the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, of course, Africa's on the other side here. And in uh, this little area here is Croatia. And uh, I'm gonna just a moment here. I'm gonna see if I can I can uh, zoom over to that. Uh, okay, so you all should be able to see. Can they all see this right here? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Great. So just to give you all some perspective on it. Uh, so we're going to fly out from Washington, D.C. Uh, across the pond. You usually, when you go there, just go straight across the Atlantic. And uh, if you're going to go to Croatia, most of the time your plane's going to land in Venice, Italy. That's the main airport serving the region. So here we are over Italy. And then I'm going to zoom in. And then you see Venice right here. And uh, the the when you the slides that I show you today are a trip that began in Venice, actually, and uh, renting a car and then driving around uh, into this whole down this whole area of Croatia all the way down to Dubrovnik. So it's really pretty much the whole length of Croatia and then back by car ending back in Venice. So I wanted to give you a little context before I uh, continue on with that video, which we'll do right now. Hopefully everybody can see it. Allied with the Byzantines against their common enemy, the Bulgarians, whom the Croats defeated in battle. Over the years, the Bulgarians and Croats clashed some more. What? By the way, can you all hear the the audio? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. The Bulgarian invasion luckily stopped at the siege of Zadar. Croatia reached its height under Grishimir the Fourth, but war and royal succession struggles weakened the kingdom, and a half-blind, bookish, humpbacked Hungarian became Croatia's king in 1102. The Hungarians gave Croatia considerable autonomy, but this did nothing to stem the Mongol invasion of 1242, where much of the country was pillaged and torched. Further, the Dalmatian coast was coveted by both Venice and the Byzantines, who had ruled it for centuries. Hungarians and Croatian forces ultimately could not stop the Venetians from snatching up the region by 1420, and Croatian miseries multiplied more when the Ottoman Turks invaded and crushed Hungary in 1526. The following year, Croatia chose Habsburg Austria as its protector, and its people harbored the hope that one day Croatians would rule their land once more. The Battle of Sisak saw the Austrians and Croatians beat the Turks, curbing the Ottoman threat. Ninety years later, the Turks lost more land after the War of the Holy League, where Austria, Russia, Venice, and Poland-Lithuania pounded the Ottomans. Slavonia was effectively linked to Croatia again, but not Western Bosnia, which had been part of Croatia in the past. To this day, Croatia's present shape reflects this geographic change. Anyway, Dalmatia had been flourishing under the Italians, and after a brief spell of French rule with Napoleon, got gobbled up by Austria in 1815. Now, the Austrians wanted Croatia to be Germanified, and when Croats turned to Hungary, well, Hungarians wanted it Hungarified. So by the 1830s, Croats stood up and said, right, that's enough, we're Croatia, now shut up and get lost. Of course, this isn't easy when you're part of an empire called Austria-Hungary, which is what happened in 1860. Despite the exertions of Ban Jelacic, but the Croat intellectuals who formed the Iliski Pokret dreamed of a South Slav state that was free, and their dreams proved infectious. Croat struggle had ensured that Hungarians had less power over Croatia than Austria, but all that ended with Austria's defeat in the First World War. In 1918, Croatia joined other South Slavs in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, much to the disapproval of the popular politician Stjepan Radic, who was assassinated by a radical Serb. It's almost as though someone was trying to warn us that this whole Yugoslavia thing was not a 
a good idea. But the concept of a united land of Slavic speakers, despite their contentious differences, rambled on into World War II. Croatia became an ally of Nazi Germany and Mussolini's Italy, with the Croatian fascist Ustasha getting control, who believed Croats were Germanic, not Slavic, and viciously butchered Serbs, Jews, Roma, and any Croats who opposed them. Altogether, between 350 and 450,000 people were killed. Not good. The group most passionately opposed to the Ustasha were the communists, led by a Croat Josip Broz Tito, who wanted the Yugoslav dream restored, just not under a king. As the war wound down, it was obvious the Nazis and their cronies couldn't win. Thousands of Ustasha members fled to the Allied forces, but the British didn't want them and sent them to the communists, who slaughtered them. 1945 found Croatia wedged firmly inside the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Somehow this boiling blend of Balkan bitterness was unified under Tito. The land, crippled by carnage, had the chance to heal under Tito, who, despite being a fellow communist, was not going to be bullied by Stalin and wanted to run the state his way with free market socialism. He kept Yugoslavia neutral during the war and was open to diplomatic relations with the West. Tourists began flocking to Yugoslavia, but then, in 1980, Tito died. And that man, who alone possessed the magically adhesive ability to keep the state unified, lacked any similarly skilled successor. The stitches began to fray and snap, especially since Serbia was setting itself up for hegemony, and Croatia declared independence in 1991, with historian Franjo Tuchman as first president. The Serb-controlled Yugoslav army marched in, and a bloody conflict ensued that ultimately saw Croatia triumphant. The following years were spent rebuilding and getting things in order, joining NATO in 2009 and the EU in 2013, and electing conservative Kolinda Grabar Kitarvic in 2015. Croatia has given the world great scientists and sports people and writers and inventions such as the speedometer, torpedo, and forensic fingerprinting. Despite its turbulent past and capricious economy, Croatia has achieved a very high human development index and seen remarkable growth. And the tourists are back, nearly 20 million visitors a year, and it isn't hard to see why. What sits ahead for Croatia? Comment below, but for now, bye-bye! Great. Any, all, I think most of us on this call have actually lived through a lot of the history of Croatia, at least the later part of it. Anybody have any comments or memories about it? My father came from Croatia. No way. Who said that? <laughs> Tom Dragovic. Oh my gosh. Oh, I should have guessed by your name. That's a Croatian right. name. <laughs> right. Whoa. That's a, what, what city in Croatia? I'm not sure. I don't know. But I can state my father taught me one thing in, in Croatia, and that was Keko TT. And what, what does that mean? How are you? Oh, nice. But that's the only thing I know of, of Slavic language. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's wonderful. And any other memories? I mean, a lot of really famous things happened in the 1990s there. Does anybody remember those? Mm. I'll tell you, Lou, uh, during the 90s, I was with the Clinton administration. Oh, my gosh. And I'd actually forgotten about Croatia, but my one of my cardiologists, who was a Croatian, uh, or came from Croatia, and she once she knew I was working for Bill Clinton, she, was, uh, she got all teary-eyed and began to talk to me about what we did, the Clinton administration did during their independence that you mentioned a moment ago. I'd forgotten about all of that until she told me about it. And candidly, I really had to go back and look it up because it's so many years ago I didn't remember all that we did. But yeah, I do remember those days. That was a, that was a tough time for the Croatian people. Real tough time. It really was. And, and, you know, as you get into the history, and in a lot of ways, it's not surprising, right? Look how bloody their history was from one, you know, one being taken over by one country after the other, and then massacres of different, you know, ethnic groups and races and religions, and just one after the other uh, for hundreds and hundreds of years. I didn't even realize that until I saw this video. You know, it's, it's this is that whole what, Balkan War that they had that... Yeah. Uh, that President Clinton was right in the middle of. Do you remember that? Yes, and he, indeed. And he threw his hat. He's probably a big reason why the Croats won that war, right? They actually have a big statue dedicated to him in the in the country now. Yeah. And one thing I'll say going over there, which I didn't expect to see, is, is you can still feel the bitterness in that region of 
you know, one ethnic group towards the other. And it's very deep, you know, it's almost like you have to tread very lightly or, or, or you get beaten up or worse. Uh, and I'll share more about that later. Uh, okay. Well, let's continue here. So our first stop was the city of Piran. We landed in Venice and we drove around the uh i should be i should probably try to toggle back and forth i don't know if i can do that well yeah i can we we uh we landed in venice and then we drove around the top here i don't i hate these little pop-ups and then uh down into croatia i mean we ended up in serbia this is the first country you get to before you enter croatia and uh and i'm going to show you the first city that we stayed in it was called peran so a lot of the cities look just like this. There's these thousand year old medieval cities. A lot of them were fishing villages. They built their houses right next to each other, you know, row houses, because they didn't have cars, of course. And um, I guess they didn't have horse and buggy either. So very dense, dense cities, one after the other, and very old. And they all have these squares. And that's my wife there, and that's my son. And so in lots of little restaurants and it's very pretty and picturesque um, and uh, but very narrow streets. And a lot of times the waste and the, they didn't have, you know, sewers or anything. So the waste would just run down these streets, you know, as they were now. It doesn't do that nowadays, but back in the day it did. So it was pretty smelly back then. Uh, but, but it sure is beautiful today. So this is the city of Peran in uh, the city uh, in, in uh, Slovenia. So then we kept driving south. And this is actually uh, one of my favorite cities. Uh, it's in mm -hmm. the peninsula. Yeah, this is this is a city called Rovinj. Rovinj. It's in it's in the peninsula. This it's this little area here, uh, right here, this little peninsula. And this peninsula in itself. Uh, it has a regional capital capital called Pula, where we didn't stay. But Rovinj by far is the most quaint city. Again, it's traditionally a fishing village. And you can see this is really typical of all the cities there. You know, all the houses are built right on top of each other. And uh, there's typically a church on top of the hill. So here's the here's the um, uh, this the steeple. And uh, and that's my daughter and son. And then uh, that's me and my wife. And here we are. This is actually a live sh uh, video of that area. So what do you guys think? <laughs> Quite an amazing place, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to take you on a walk up to the church. I wanted to show you this walk because it's really typical of the cities there. Another reason why they're so dense is because the outer buildings create a, a wall. Uh, so back when, the, when Rome fell, there was all kinds of warring tribes in Europe, one invading the other, you know, seemingly year after year. And so a lot of the cities had fortified walls. And if you didn't have a fortified wall... The, the, the buildings themselves became the wall. And that is very true in this area of Croatia. So I'll take you on a walk through the city. Let me catch up to you. Slow down. I'm going around. Sorry. 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 So what do you think of the streets of Rovin? Uh oh. Be careful. So our goal is to get up to the church that you saw in the picture, and uh, this is this goes on for miles and miles and miles. These narrow streets. Oh, the, look here. The interesting thing is, look at the look at the wow. Look at the ground, the street that we're walking on. That's polished limestone. The street itself is beautiful. It's like it's like furniture. It's polished, it's polished limestone. And it's really sort of weird. It's so beautiful. So I'm going to jump forward. Get out here. In between the houses, there's, 
Oh. Use little access areas Check where you can out. get down to the water. And oh, these, what's going on here? These houses drop the right off. Oh my gosh. And you see back in the That's day the last step, everybody. Back in the day, a heavy door would block that right in case there's an invasion. Wow. Let's see if I can hold my camera out over the edge. Hold on. I don't want to have a Grand Canyon experience here. What you've heard about. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't see. All right. Bethy, what did you think of that? Uh, that was just so a risky. lot of people would fish right out their window and, you know, be able to put food on the table by fishing right out the window. And here we are, we're walking up trying to get to the church, going higher and higher. Churches are always in the very top of the hill. So here we are going higher and higher. Higher and higher. Oh, well, let's look over the edge first. Finally, we got to the top of the hill where the church is. Oh, wow. My arthritis is really kicking yeah, in yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I was moving real <laughs> slow. Yeah, we saw this. But let's, let's look around the edge. And you so must that's have been the top in a of the hill. You got a beautiful day. view. Hey guys. And that's the church steeple right there. Quite cold enough. And now the sun starts to set. And we're still going up to the church. What do you think so far? Matthew, what do you think? So nice. Lou, does it get cold in that part of the country at all? Oh yeah. It's not tropical here. So we're we're there we're there in the summertime. That's uh we're there we're there in July. Oh good. Yeah, and, and it's you know pretty much it's cooler than DC there. It's actually quite a bit cooler than DC. And uh, that's because of the winds from the water. I think so. I think so. The winter time is warmer than DC, but not a lot warmer. It gets cold there. The church on top oh, of the church. Does it snow? Actually going to uh, it does off. snow a little bit. Yeah, it's probably okay. really similar to DC, story. to be honest with you. Thanks for watching. Okay. Except a little cooler in the summertime because of the because of the water. Uh -huh. Maybe it's like Ocean City, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, so we made it to the top, and that's a really typical city, you know, close in, tight, tight streets, all that stuff. Real typical city. And then there's my son. Here we are at the top again, and then. Uh, here we are heading back down. This is that same trip up to the. So what are you thing. guys doing here? I want to show you this because you see a little more of the restaurants. There's a lot of little restaurants in between you know where the hotel is. In between the hotels. Now, back in the day, this was a living city. You know, all those houses were occupied by fishermen, and and so you know that was a that was the way of life back then. But nowadays, the whole thing is converted to tourism. And, uh, you know, it's sort of sad because the traditional lifestyle is pretty much gone now. It probably left in the last 20 years. Well, actually, of course, during the what? war, there was no traditional life. But what? In the last 10 or 20 years. I have hours and hours of film. It's been taken Thank over by tourism. You see all these restaurants, really typical. All those people you see, those are all tourists. Yeah. yeah. Those are all tourists. You, it, there's one thing that I'm not seeing are children. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, you know, I never thought about that. That's yeah, I saw the dog. I saw the dog and the cat, the stray dogs and cats, or maybe they're human pets. But, I mean, I don't see any children. 
you know, you're bringing up a really good point. And it's probably because these aren't living cities anymore. You know, these are the tourist places. So they so, this is where they come to work, basically. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, that's a really good point you brought up. Maybe, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Lou, you saying that the vampires got them, huh? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, did you all see that dog? You see that dog we passed? Yeah, yeah with was... the gray, with the green eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, you saw that? I yeah, never his, that his eyes were reflecting the light of your camera. But... I thought there was a vampire dog. No, I swear, he was to live. No. <laughs> I was going to stop the video on that. Yeah. Maybe they kind of like, like you said, since it's more tourism and they probably tired of being invaded, so they just take the children out to the suburbs or something. Well, and I also think they make more money. All, all almost all of these, you know, houses are rented out now as hotels. And, and oh even, even, even the place we were living, we were living in someone's house, but the, but, but but it was costing us two hundred dollars a night to stay in a you know one little small bedroom. Yeah. So me, my wife, and my son, we all packed in one little bedroom. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 very expensive, and um, and so that's a that's a inhibiting factor. But the biggest thing that I didn't like about this was was how the how the traditional lifestyle is gone, and it's mm. completely replaced by tourists. And 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 uh, this is true of every city we went to, one after the other, it was like all the same, you know. And I'm gonna I'm gonna skip towards the end. Hello. And now we're heading towards our hotel. You'll see where we stayed. Okay, there we are. So I'm gonna turn the film off. That's the door of our oh, house right there. We're staying at the Golden Goose. That's the Golden Goose. All the cats go to the Golden Goose because they think they can eat there. <laughs> so he's walking with you guys. The goose. He's got his own pad. Okay, so. <laughs> Okay, that's our house right there. What do you think, Monique? Give me one last final goodbye. <laughs> that was our bed. That's our bedroom window. There were all these different families living in each bedroom, and that what that part was okay. But you know, the tourist was a little a little tough. And now here we are leaving. We we ate along the street. Had a beautiful sunset that night, and uh, we we stayed in Rovinj for three days. And then we headed on to, I think, the most beautiful place I've ever been, you know, it, it, in, certainly in Europe, uh, maybe anywhere, but certainly in Europe. And uh, here it is right here. Mm. It, it's called the, I can't pronounce it. Maybe, maybe Tom, you can pronounce it. It's in uh, Serbian or in that language, Croatian. It's the, the Plavica Lakes. Pl, 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 it's Plit Vice Lakes. I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah, it's a national park, and it's uh, widely held as the most beautiful national park in all of Europe. Hmm. What's interesting <laughs> about it is this river cut a path over the millennium through these limestone uh, mountains. These mountains are all made of limestone. So, so you know, has, has anybody that's called been to the, the Loray Caverns? You know, the Loray mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I've, I've been there. Yeah. Oh, so it's like yeah. that. Well, it's like it's that, okay. but but it, but, it, but a different. It's a, it's the same phenomena except it's on top of the ground. So, oh, okay. So you know how you know how water dissolves limestone slowly, but yeah. then it, but then it resolidifies. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have all those amazing formations the in the Loray caverns. Yeah. Well, well, when well, if water from a river is flowing through limestone, it also dissolves the limestone, but it makes like these limestone deposits right at the end and creates these pools, one pool after another yep. pool after another mm -hmm. pool, and mm -hmm. these pool these pools and waterfalls go back about five miles it's just incredible and uh it's like it's it's so i'll show you so we'll jump into this real quick if you get a chance go on youtube and look it's it's the plitvice lakes i never heard of it until i went there 
come to find out it's widely considered the most beautiful national park in all of Europe. So I'm going to continue. So Is the water really that color? Oh, yeah. It's right off my camera. No touch it up. That is so fascinating. Yeah. Well, hey, you ever, you ever see pictures or you ever go to the tropics, you know, or they have coral reefs and stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you know uh, that beautiful turquoise water they have? Yeah. That's what this that, looks like. That, that water is turquoise for the same reason. Because the water, salt water, dissolves the limestone, but it's not limestone. It dissolves the coral. Cor uh -huh. Coral and shells are made out of the same thing limestone's made out of. In, in fact, limestone is just, uh, you know, is just solidified coral and shells and that kind of stuff. It's, in, you know, so, so that's why that tropical water looks so beautiful and turquoise color. Same reason as this does. So I'm going to continue. So these waterfalls are coming down from every direction, you know, for miles and miles and miles. So it's uh, lake right now. Really well, can you walk us down, see what we're looking at, Randy? Can you, you tell us? Way, back way? Yeah. Come on, Come on. Now, what's, what is this, Matthew? So this is one of the limestone terraces, isn't it? Yeah. Water is so blue. Why is it so blue, Matthew? That's reflecting off the limestone, right? Oh, it's from yeah. the limestone? Yeah. Mm. That is really wow. fascinating. All right, I'm going to mm. walk up here for a second. Look at that. Excuse me. I wouldn't have been able to walk across that little bridge without a railing. Uh -oh. Uh oh mm -hmm. no! Mm -hmm. It would have made me. I would have got vertical <laughs> and fell in. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't have been able to walk up them the, all that stuff. Well, all the pathway you walked that that was too much. Um, they'd have to walk, they'd have to drop home. me off and pick me up on the way back. <laughs> I need a I, rail. I've been a fell in it. I've been a me fell in that water. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. no. Been right in there swimming. No water. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> uh, and that bridge, that bridge don't look like it was that sturdy either. No, it looks sturdy, but it don't look like it it's looks sturdy to me. I, what it is, it's not wide enough for me. Yeah, I need I need some rails to catch and me. Some rails. Yeah, <laughs> some rails catch me when I'm leaning. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm, I get vertigo and I'll be right in Who there. That? Don't say nothing. When it's that curb and turn, I'll be the straight. <laughs> mm -hmm, I've been crawling down there. <laughs> Shoot. Mm. So what does that water go into from the fall? Does it go into the Mediterranean Sea or where? Eventually, yes. Okay. Wow. These well, are cool. these the cool. streams that are on top of the cliffs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coming down the cliff. Mm -hmm. right. So it just continues to go on like that. Mm. No, <laughs> passing nobody on that little small. Oh my God, Jesus! <laughs> yeah. You better catch hold to one of them trees. <laughs> No, oh Lord, no, I'll be hugging the wall. I, 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 no, I, I don't got nervous just looking at it. Jesus, that you mm -hmm. uh -huh. send me an angel. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh huh. It kind of looks a little bit like Great Falls. Yep, that That's, part. Uh huh. That's beautiful, right there. Mm -hmm. mm. Ain't no fish in there. Yeah, it's probably deeper there. down. The shock and all. <laughs> they say they can fish from the window. <laughs> and that right there is probably really deep. Uh huh. Yeah, it's really so blue. You can tell I had to came over some of the little mountains and all. Mm hmm. 
But that trail looked like it's built on top of a mountain, but it was just it wasn't that high. Yeah. So so the 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 limestone creates this like dams, all these little dams, and then you have these little lakes behind the dams. Yep. And then you walk up another hundred yards, and there's another dam, and more waterfalls, mm -hmm. and it goes on for miles and miles. Uh, it's it's really quite amazing. You sort of wonder how that even happened. This is like uh, this is like uh, King Kong. <laughs> mm hmm. It's really pretty if you like nature that Indeed. much. It's really pretty. Look at, but I would not want to be there with that, all that water. And what mountain. about what about wildlife? What kind of um four legged creatures are there? Besides, yeah, we didn't dogs see any wildlife at all. A lot of tourists were in here, so I think mm -hmm. it scared them all off. Yeah, but the water, the, these lakes are full of fish. The the limestone yep. that does not hurt the fish. Wow. Do, they have like, do they have like bears and wolves or I think so. I think they have all that there. Oh okay. Oh, and I won't be out there. <laughs> but there's so many but, but they so don't many have tourists. it in the mountains, right? They yeah, they make it too much noise. When humans come through, they kind of <laughs> run away. Yeah. So mm. many tourists around. And they usually come through moving at night anyway. So. Yeah. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. It is. That is pretty. Just that the bridge is too small. Oh, that, I, that oh, is right yeah. there. Yeah, that is. Oh, look at that. Oh, now, oh my God, that's so oh, pretty. Ooh, like a sprinkler. <laughs> yeah, I know. Want to jump under there and wash your hair. Mm. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> and the fish might fall on your hair. What? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It is. Mm -hmm. so I'll stop there. And then here's the last picture of my wife and my son. And, and it's, you know, this farther up, there's just one after the other. But this is only, this only part of the way through. Uh, we just don't have enough time. Okay, so I don't know if there's any Catholics in our cro in our group here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so, Catholic. So I'm a Catholic. Is, this is, sure. this is, so part of our trip was we wanted to go to, do you ever hear of Major Gore, May, I can't even pronounce it, Major Gore, Major Gore, it's in Bosnia, it's the site of an apparition, a, a, a merry apparition, <laughs> yeah. um, Major, Major Gore, Major Gore, it's very famous. So we, we had to cross into Bosnia here. So traditionally, Bosnia is a, an Arabic or Muslim country, and Croatia is a Christian country. And that was part of the reason there was conflict there. So now we're crossing into <laughs> Bosnia, and we're at Major Major Gori. I, I can't even pronounce it right. So here is this church where they built uh, the site for these apparitions. And so I'm stopping here because... The apparition of the Virgin Mary, the appearance of the Virgin Mary happened on top of this mountain. And mm -hmm. tradition has it, you're supposed to go up barefoot. Now, you know, I don't go up barefoot in any mountains, but my wife does. So, you know, she's doing it barefoot. Uh, so here she is barefoot going up there. It's a little crazy from my standpoint. Oh, you let your wife out, do you? Yeah, she's barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> She looks as young as your son. Did you cradle rob her? Ah. <laughs> yeah, people ask me, people always ask me, how did I get her? A nasty looking guy like me get her. But, you know, I have a good rap, I think. Oh, okay. All right, Lou. We're going to leave that alone. Okay. Right on, Lou. Lou said, my <laughs> Lou said he's not intimidating himself at all. Uh huh. <laughs> so here we are right here my, me and my son going up here going to get that here's the, that's where the apparition ha happened right up there and then uh, and then here's walking the last section she went all the way barefoot mm -hmm. and then this is miles here this is we're like an hour and a half into it right now 
She's what? still barefoot. I would, I'm, I I'm moving barefoot. slower than her with my arthritis kicking in. <laughs> you should have got some fish oil. <laughs> Grease them bones. <laughs> Does that work? This apparition was this where the me. children saw the Virgin Mary? Yes, yes. it is. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. seen a picture of this from Father Bob uh, at Holy Redeemer. He uh, took a group and went there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was at uh, Holy Redeemer. I think he was at Saint Francis, Francis de Sales. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was at uh, when when. When he went to Croatia, um, I think. Uh -huh. My cousin went on that on that um that heights. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Did he like it, your cousin or she? Oh, he liked it. He liked it. Yeah. There was a time in his life when he wanted to be um part of the order, but then he met this girl and that was the end of that. <laughs> she ordered his <laughs> She the only one up there don't have shoes on. Oh, there's a few. There's someone else. Somebody uh, in front of her head didn't have shoes on. And then at night they have these. They they held these services at the same time that they saw the apparition of the Virgin Mary every night, and they still have like these visions that happen. So they hold it at the same time. I think it's like seven p.m. every night, and people from wow. all over the world, pilgrims from all over the world, gather here. Do they still go in the water there, or or have a, a place where they put the uh, they put the um, people go in the water for healing? Well, actually, they do. They I bought I bought lots of bottles home, and to be honest with you, my arthritis was not hurting as bad after I drank that water. For really, it, it was not hurting as bad after that. <laughs> you drank that fish water. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, we brought home a gallons yeah. of that water. No. Yeah. It, 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 they 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 um they uh really uh say that the people who have said and testified uh to the Pope's uh council that um that the people have really been healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean healed from like cancer and um uh one person uh took her child there. And um, the child was healed from um, autism. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. That's big. Uh, and oh. and that was that was the, they're doing a study on that child because that child is um, a grown adult now, and um, uh, he has no no signs of autistic um, traits anywhere. Mm -hmm. After his um, quest to Mecca, like. Uh -huh. Majorca. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's I that's, believe that. I believe that. Mm -hmm. We all need to catch a plane over there. I'm gonna break go. Yeah, <laughs> I, I need I need some extra pains removed. I really do. Yeah, I got a back problem that's killing me right now. Okay. Yeah, I need to get hop me a plane and get my little stuff. And we're gonna go, we're gonna get up and go all over there. We'll go together. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 I might have some of the water left. Only problem is four years old now. I'm not sure I would drink it. <laughs> oh, have mercy. All right, well, I'm going to continue here. I'm Watch my face and see if I age. <laughs> age backwards, Thelma. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go oh. backwards to the forward. <laughs> Be looking like a little teeny bopper. I don't know, I might look like a mermaid. Fish scales and all. Oh, Lord, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know where my bishop went and got that holy water from when he was up it on that mountain. something to that because if it wasn't, it wouldn't have as much um, publicity as it does. What, mm -hmm. this site right here? Yeah, site. Well, you know, they call that miracles, and I believe that. Yeah, uh -huh. God, can, God can do all, anything, so mm -hmm. He can He can heal and He can do whatever. You all see these flags? The Korean flag, the yeah. Italian mm -hmm. flag. Yeah, uh -huh. all over the world mm -hmm. come here to try to get healed. There's Brazilian flag. How did they all get the, the world come here to get healed? Here. 
They got an elevator those somewhere. Wheelchairs up there. Yeah. It's an elevator somewhere. Oh, oh the elevator somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Who pulled that up there? Yeah, because I saw somebody in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I know in Lords in France, they actually carry the people. They have people that carry people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they had a lot of that there. Mm -hmm. A lot of that. Carry me so well. <laughs> <laughs> I think I use my wheelchair. <laughs> I think I fall up the steps. <laughs> so continuing on here. Uh, okay, so then. Oh, then we, that's gorgeous. Oh, yeah, so, uh -huh. so this is that statue. Yeah, so this I, is the, this is the site where the um. I got to remember, brother. yeah, the, the mountaintop, it's one or the other. The mountaintop, my wife, when I were, were all climbing, that's either the place that the children saw the Virgin Mary from, or, and then this is the place where they actually saw the Virgin Mary standing, or they were standing here and the Virgin Mary was in the other place. I can't remember which is which, but either way. It was this, around that throne. Yeah, either way. That. <laughs> this is this is this this is the other sacred site. So what's really interesting, and this is where I got a taste of of the of the the pent up. I don't know what the right word is. The pent up, I guess, pain within the local people. Keep in mind, this is only you know ten. When did they have the Olympics? Remember the Olympics where they mm -hmm. they were in Yugoslavia mm -hmm. and the whole thing got burned out. It was bombed and all that. I mean, like 20 years ago so people, so they, people uh, lost houses they lost children they lost you know it was horrible war so when we were yeah. up here i was just chatting with my with my wife's cousin and some guy was just like absolutely blew his top i thought he was going to kill me and and i could just feel like he had this anger inside you know i didn't want to go there with this guy because he was off but uh, you know, that's when I really started to realize, oh my gosh, there's a lot of pent up, pent up, uh, you know, pain amongst the people because of this, you know, these terrible wars that they've been through. Yeah, they got a lot of post traumatic stress syndrome going on. That's it. That's exactly it. No, that's that's because Lou can't go anywhere in the world without starting something. <laughs> oh. oh, he was in pain. <laughs> So here we are. Okay, so here's another. So then we took another trip, a little side trip to. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Yes. Yeah, this is a, this That's is in great. Bosnia. It's a famous bridge in Bosnia. This is built in 1300s. Uh, it's called Mostar, Mostar in Bosnia, and, and this is another place. You just you just like the way they talked about the Croatians was just like so meanly, you know, like mm. talking about the Croatians like they were you know rats or rodents or something like that. <laughs> You know, there's mm -hmm. just some really deep hatred yeah. and going both directions. So you got to tread very carefully to some degree. You know, once you, you don't really, you're not really aware of that when you're tourists, but once you start tapping into that, you go, oh my gosh, you know, I got to be yeah. careful here. Uh, but, but I don't want to paint a bad picture either because the people were very, very nice to us. Very, very nice. You know, everybody was very nice to us. I, I saw a picture of that, Lou, um, at my uh, 55th anniversary of uh, uh, high school reunion. And um, one of the girls that I went to school with, father worked at the embassy. And, and uh, she stayed in this area, but they've gone back. And uh, she went there recently to visit. And oh, she nice. brought back some pictures. Uh -huh, and, um, she came by to show me, um, and, I, and so I'm I'm getting to see this again. I, I thought that was a beautiful picture. It's a beautiful place, and again, the, the people were so nice to us and kind to us, and uh, you know, we had a wonderful, wonderful time on this trip. I, I'm so happy we took the trip, and you know, I gotta I gotta be careful when I talk about you know some of the things of the past because uh, you know those that's just a delicate subject. I think. Uh, so that bridge, that bridge had been destroyed during the Serbian Croatian War, and it just recently, within the last 
maybe five or six years has it been repaired. But the boys in the town get on that bridge and they dive into the water. And all the tourists there throw money at them while they're diving. Hmm. Now, Tom, you're, you're absolutely right. How do you know that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I read a lot. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Uh, I I watch a lot of PBS, so that's how I know what it is. Yeah, th th this bridge, the original 13th century or 14th century bridge, survived Destroyed. all the way until that war. Right. And then and then they, the the span section was busted out, so they rebuilt this section right here. But the parapets on the sides are original. They still. stayed. Yes. Yeah, it was just in the middle part that they destroyed during that war and like I said just recently within the last six, seven, eight years who knows they just put it together again huh. yeah. but there, there's still a lot of the animosity between the Croats and the Serbs and that's the war that almost destroyed that area I mean, just think of the PTSD, folks. This was not oh. that long ago. This was not no. that long ago. Yeah. Oh, well, it was during the Clinton administration. Yep. That that Wait, war that's that it. war began. All right. Well, I'll keep going here, and so here we are in this section, and this is the uh, mainly a Muslim section. Again, people were just so nice to us, and. Uh, Streets were windy and beautiful. Very tourist oriented though as well. And that's me and my wife by the bridge. And then, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Now, now I want to jump into. Uh, boy, we're gonna be we're gonna run a little over, but I got time today. This is the this is the major site. Uh, Croatia has, I think they said, uh, I don't know how many like UN World Heritage sites sites that are precious right. to the history of the world. And and one of them, the most famous one, is this city right here. This is the southern end of Croatia. Anybody? Can anybody guess what city I'm about to go to? Dubrovnik, maybe. Oh my gosh, Tom, you're a ringer again. Find <laughs> within its walls, as it has been for centuries, Dubrovnik juts out from the rocky Croatian coastline, looking inviting for both land and the sea. Its central promenade is the heartbeat of the city, a thriving people zone. It's a multi-generational celebration of life where everybody's out enjoying that Mediterranean knack for you know, some kids. Maybe going strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, more people. Rovnik is very touristy, and understandably so. Even with all its crowds, as anywhere, backstreet charm is just a few steps away. Step lanes help you imagine actually living here in an age before tourism dominated the economy. The town's imposing architecture is a reminder of its former glory. In the 15th century, the salt trade and shipbuilding made Dubrovnik a maritime power and rival to Venice. The Spons of Hell is a fine surviving example of Dubrovnik's golden age in the 15th and 16th mm. centuries, combining both Renaissance and Venetian Gothic styles. Stepping into its stately courtyard takes you back to that illustrious age. Mm -hmm. Through clever diplomacy, Dubrovnik managed to maintain its independence until the 1800s. Through all those centuries, the Republic of Dubrovnik invested mightily to withstand any siege. They stockpiled grain in huge underground silos, and piped in water from nearby mountains. Dubrovnik's single best attraction is its mighty wall, offering an unforgettably scenic mile-long stroll. While constructed over many centuries, today's impressive fortifications date from the 1400s, when they were beefed up to defend against the Ottoman Turks. While the walls worked fine against the Turks five centuries ago, they couldn't protect the city from modern artillery. In 1991, after Croatia declared independence from Yugoslavia, the Yugoslav army shelled the city, damaging about two-thirds of its buildings. Brighter, newer tiles mark the houses that were hit and roofs that had to be replaced. 
Hmm. These roofs were rebuilt using the same materials as the original ones. When the war engulfed this beloved city, the world paid attention. Today, as the new tiles are fading, so are the scars of that war. Hmm. We're staying at a small guest house at the top of town. Throughout Croatia, Sovent, that's rooms for rent in private homes, are a much better value than big hotels. Ours is run by Pero. Hero, tell me about the war here in Dubrovnik. Well, it was a very difficult time. So Dubrovnik was under siege for eight months. So no water, no electricity, no food, medicine. And all the refugees from, from all those smaller places around, they came in Dubrovnik, hoping they would not dare to do such a thing to the block, right? What happened to this house? This well, house. this house was hit by two grenades from mortar, mortar, right? So this is what I find in my, uh, on the top of my house. Two of those explode. So house was hit, no tiles. I, so I could see the sky. There's no, no roofs on the house. And this house, this house is more than six century old, and it's in my family more than 200 years. So I took some loans in the bank, and I decided to rent it like, uh, like a guest house. So now it's the tourists to come back, and you have a good business. Yes. And that's a beautiful right. house. Congrats. The, the quality, the craftsmanship is just beautiful here. Thank you very much. With the war in the past, the tourists are back. To escape the crowds, hit the beaches during the heat and crush of midday. Go for a dip near or far from the old town. Wherever you choose, you'll swim in the shadow of one of Europe's finest fortified medieval cities. And evenings in town are peaceful. A hole in the mighty wall leads to a great little bar called Bouja, just the place for a romantic sunset. Glad a lemon up there. Clinging like a barnacle to the outside of the city walls, this tranquil getaway is the perfect place to appreciate this city's extraordinary setting. Great. So that's a little bit of Dubrovnik. Uh, I'm gonna. I have some pictures from us, but I think that covered it pretty well. And we're over time. I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, these are our pictures. Again, Dubrovnik was beautiful, and uh, but you can see that almost everybody who lives in both Croatia and Bosnia, who's of a certain age, you know, older person has got this immense tragedy that they, you know, coexist with because it impacted everybody. And you heard the testimony of that, uh, of that hotel owner. So it's, uh, it is a, it is a, but, but again, I was never treated better in any country as a tourist. It was a wonderful place to go. Then, uh, so then I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek and on next week's uh, adventure so I'm going to give you a hint on where it is, okay? Let's see oh. if you can guess first. We're next. This is going to be hey, next, dude, next week. Uh, Veterans Day. It will be two weeks from now. Oh, two weeks from now. It gives me more time to prepare. <laughs> okay, let's mm. see who can guess. First one to guess. Oh, 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 no, there's one more city. Sorry. So now we are heading back north. This was actually my favorite city in all of Croatia. This city right here. It's called Omis. Uh, it's the main square. And we're actually living in the top floor of that little building there. It's the oldest building in Omis. And here we are across the street from Omis. Omish, Omish it's called. It's a very mountainous community. Hey, what do you guys think of this place, Matthew? So nice. Oh, my God. This is it, right? This is everything, everything that we went through. This is it, right, guys? This is the best. This is the best. This is the best that uh, we have to offer here. So then here, here we are in Omish. This is the place where Croatians go. This There was nobody from outside of uh, Croatia here. And it's a beautiful little town. The prices are really low here. We got a full big giant pizza for like $3. You Whoa. know, for all of us. 
it, at night they have free concerts. There's a castle, a medieval castle up here, right here. There's a medieval castle built in the <clears> like <throat> the, you know about two thousand years ago. <clears throat> Just a gorgeous little town, free concerts. <clears throat> So the, the local guys, you know, the local people know where to go. And this is and it's Omis. This place is incredible. Here's the beach at Omis. Omish. Where are you guys? You're Omish. Mm. Omish. Omish. Bless you. Bless you. What do you guys think of what do you guys think of Omish? Matthew, what were you saying about this this place earlier today? <coughs> Back here, place in Europe. It's your favorite place in all of Europe. I have to Those agree. mountains are spectacular. Whitewater rafting. Yeah. Flying, they have tracking. They have all kinds of stuff. All right, let's. So okay, so here's your hit. Here we go. Where's this? Venice. 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 Uh, yep. Yeah. Who who got that? Is that Ron? Yes, Venice. Mm hmm. So this is in two weeks. This is your. This is where we're gonna be. Oh, Italy. <laughs> yeah, Italy. So the whole presentation will be on yeah. either Venice or on Italy. One of the two. That's Venice. Right. Venice. The sinking city of the Italian so the Venice, coast. Venice is actually my favorite city in all of Europe. It's just such a remarkable, remarkable place. Even with all, and it's it's still a living city. It's not just all tourists. I mean, people actually live there and work there outside of the tourist industry. Remarkable place. Okay. <laughs> Any thoughts or questions before we do the trivia? No. Nope. Mm. Okay, um, Lisa wanna... said in the chat, does any people of color live there? Oh, oh, in, in Venice or in, yeah. in Croatia? No, yeah, you know, I, I guess you know, as you could tell by the pictures, not many. Uh, I, I think it's it's you know more of a like a just a, a European or a Slavic population. Um, uh, so I think that I, I don't, you know, I did really not too many, a few tourists from time to time. But when you go into the small towns and the villages, like the places where, where you know, there you don't get tourists, you know, you really don't see any any people of color in those communities, and 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 not too many tourists either. But there are some, and that may be true of a lot of Eastern Europe. You know, it's uh, it's uh, at least the places that I've been over there. Uh, you know, but but again, I mean, at least I, we were treated well. I never heard any testimony. We talked to couples who were of color, uh, uh, and there's people from Bangladesh who are working in some of the shops that we talked to. Uh, that is an issue, actually. Maybe we'll talk about it when we talk about about Italy the the way the, the there's a big migration from bangladesh into european cities and, and a lot of them are uh i, I there's, a, there's a lot of controversy about that because the wages are so low and things um and then you know i never heard from any african-american couples that that we had encountered or talked to about uh you know any reason not to go there or any you know anything like that uh but uh yeah, but that's about what I'll know. Uh, all right. Well, let me. Any any more questions or thoughts? I think we're uh, ready for the trivia. Okay. Let me just cue it up. <laughs> but the the water and the trees, it just it just looks so nice and yeah. you know flourishing. <laughs> Yep. Peaceful. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Almost there. Almost there, but we're running way over here. 
Whoops. Sorry, folks. Apologize. I got this. Unfortunately, I got the status bar on the bottom of this thing that's preventing me from seeing the option to play it. Okay, here we go. Oh, did you uh, share your screen, Lou? Yeah, yeah, I'm just about to do that. Okay. Just about to do that. Here we go. Okay, everybody see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Okay, uh, so here's some Croatia trivia. Here's a good one. Anybody know this one? Nikola Tesla. Nikola, right, who Nikola. got that? Who was that? Whoa, Brenda. Brenda, Brenda right. Right on. He's one of the most famous inventors in the history of the world. You yes. right about that. Good job. Very good. Very good. Nikola Tesla. Necklace or a bracelet, Brenda? Uh, necklace. All right. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I had a computer business for years, and my the most brilliant tech I had you know, was, was from Croatia. I don't know what they what they what they feed them back there, but there's some brilliant people. <laughs> All right, here's a good here's another one. What famous tennis player was born next to Croatia? What <clears throat> Martina nobody female. Female, I know. Oh, God, I can't think of her name. It, it sounds like your know. name, uh, Tom. Yeah, I know. I know. I can't think of her name, though. Goran Inovich. Who? Goran. Somebody. No, it's no, it no, Some no, bitch no, on the no, end. No, it's no, a bitch. No, no. <laughs> no, no it's a tennis player. No, no. What's famous? Tennis player was born next. G O R A N first name. No, 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 no. no. I I could actually Mar say what Mar famous tennis player was born next to Croatia. The f female tennis player. It wasn't Martina. Uh, that's, that, that's who I was thinking of. Manitoba or whatever. Well, you know there is a famous female one from Croatia, but keep in mind I'm saying next to Croatia. Mm. It, it is, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. It's a male tennis player, mm -hmm. and you can't get and you can't get much more famous than this guy from right. a male tennis player's perspective. Who could that oh, be? Yeah. He's on the commercial right now. Good no, 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 I don't know. Is I it Ivan? It. He's on a subway commercial right here. Oh, Novak. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> no, that, uh, no, that, no, that. That was a hard one, Lou. Yeah, sorry. Okay, one. Well, let that saves me a that saves me a necklace or a bracelet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a tough one, Lou. <laughs> hey, uh, Tom, Tom, what what is your last name end in? V I C. Yeah. There you go. I thought you'd no, get this one for sure. No H. Well, I knew where it was. I couldn't think of his name. Okay. <laughs> I th I thought I thought this is a, a dead dead ringer for you. No. All right. He's actually born in Bel Belgrade, Serbia. Belgrade. Mm -hmm. Belgrade. Serb. Mm-hmm. Serb. Serbak. Djokovic. Yeah. Okay. Next. Last Djokovic. question. Last question. <laughs> Here's a good. This should be an easy one. What country was Croatia a part of in 1978? Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. Who said Yugoslavia. that? Who said that? Yugoslavia. Yeah, who said that? Who said that? Somebody said it before. I think Miss I think Miss Wallace said that. Yes, I did. I'm familiar yes, with Wallace the said that. She, she, she mm -hmm. said that first. I recognize her voice. Good mm -hmm. job, Wallace. <laughs> so so let's we, we can conclude with the map here. So this is the first city we went to is Peran, right up here in Slovenia. Then we went down to Rovinj, which is right here in Croatia. And then we went, drove over to those falls, the Plavica Lakes Falls and all that, which was right around here. And then we drove all down the coast, all the way down 
from there to we crossed the border into Bosnia yeah. and we went to uh, we went to uh, uh, Major Gore Major Gore of the the pilgrimage site. I should say, by the way, that the pilgrimage site had a lot of people of color there. That that attracted people from all over the world. All although there were more Caucasians there, admittedly, than you know than what you'd find in the United States on average. But it was more diverse uh, there than probably any other place we went. Uh, then uh, then over there, then we went to Mostar, which is a little farther in. Here's Sarajevo. This is uh, where we had the Olympics. This whole thing was bombed out. Remember they had the Olympics here in the 1980s? Mm -hmm. the, the Winter mm -hmm. Olympics. It was bombed oh, out. Yeah. Totally oh, devastated during the war. Mm -hmm. Then we went down to Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik's down here. And then we drove back up to Omis. Omis is right here. And then we drove back up to Venice. And we'll pick up the journey next week two weeks in venice all right folks well that's Ms. it wallace, would you like a necklace or a bracelet miss wallace necklace all right thank you so much good job miss wallace and, and good thank job you. you brenda as well hey, all thank right, you folks. And, and yeah, oh by the way um real this is really this is actually uh, sort of important because i want to end every call like this from now on it's it's really important for us uh for actually for DACL that we get as much attendance on these calls as possible. And so I'm uh, wondering from you all getting, I would like to get some ideas from you. Like how can I do a better job presenting? I'm asking all of our presenters to ask the audience that uh, also uh, are there other topics you'd like to see presented? And then the last thing, is there anything that you all can do to help bring more people onto these calls? Because the more attendance we can show on these calls, the better we can justify this program from a from a budget standpoint, you know, to DC government. Any yeah. thoughts about any all three of those questions? Well, Lou, can they come on and they don't have to have no alpha pan duty? Or do they have to belong? No, to yeah, work? they can come on. Yeah, they can come on. No, part none not outside of our program. So anybody within our program that you know that um that may not have participated in a while just please let them know that yes we have you know a session every day at 10 12 and 1 30 p.m so anybody that you know within the program that hasn't been on a while please reach out to them that's all we ask so they but can I, like, I mean, like people that yeah, they have to be within our program, program for safety and uh you know just you know so that's fair you have to be in the program to be on our sessions oh okay mm -hmm. Because there's a lot yeah, of people uh, that uh, wouldn't mind coming on, but, you know, they're yeah. not. Yeah, yes, yes, I understand. But anybody know within the program, please just let them know to come back on or to see what's new, okay? Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any 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 ideas about, you know, how we can get more attendance? I've been trying because I have some church members, the seniors in our group, and they want to come on. They they resident to Washington D.C., but they have not been selected by DACA or the uh, D.C. seniors of you know uh, people whoever. So yeah, mm -hmm. they trying to find out how can they sign up for this program. And also, I I turned it over to my pastor. I gave him uh, Miss uh, Teresa's number, and I gave him. Uh, it's not through Teresa's number. It's, number it's and all like that. You know? um, hotline number. Um, you have to contact DACA. So, um, mm -hmm. in order, so that's how you can get four folks in, but we're mainly talking about those that are already in the program, especially those that have joined for at least a year or even more. Anybody that you know within our program that hasn't joined, please reach out to them to let them know what they're missing out on because it's a lot of great free interactive presentations, right? So make sure you let them know to come back to take advantage of it while it's still here. Alex, what did they call? Okay, the ones was in the in the program and not showing up. So that's what you talk about. That group. Okay. Alice, what number should they call? Jackal's hotline. Hi. Okay. Yes, Jackal's hotline number. But just keep keep that in mind. We want imagine if everybody could have seen Lou's presentation. We could have had even more opinions and more now you don't set. So make sure you guys let them know and to you know, 
And we but are they are they still accepting people to get the iPads? Yeah. Um, you say, yeah. We, we, yes, we have we have many many participants, and of course, the new year we will have new folks, but we still have a lot of folks on that have joined in the past few years. So yeah, but I don't even I don't even know none of them, but about one person. Well, yes, that's why it's <laughs> a group effort. So um, so yes, <laughs> those questions of mine that Lou asked, but we really appreciate you getting on to today. Let's uh thank Lou for hosting today's uh, lunch club as always. Thank, Thank you, Lou. Lou. Thank you, Lou. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Lou. Let me Thank know what you, I can do better, too. You know, I, you. I really want these to be of value to you all. That's my only interest. Thank okay, you. I got my necklace, Lou. Thank you. I Thank got you. It was beautiful. Oh, Urban my pleasure. I my got pleasure. my necklace. Lou. Thank you. My pleasure. It's an honor. It's an honor to be on these calls with you all. I, it's the highlight of my week. Thank you. I look forward to it. It's very educational. I like to learn something new every day. That's right. right. At least yeah, I know I get it on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing now, Alex. I'll I'll leave it to you to shut her down. All right, Lou. You have a good day. We'll be starting our uh, module in a couple of minutes. So please get something to eat. Okay. Something. Bye, bye, Lou. Bye. Bye.